Hello everyone and welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today's other runtime action we're going to go over is the attack settings runtime. In here you'll be able to change some of your basic attack settings. For instance, hit damage you'll be able to increase or decrease that. You'll be able to change your attack detections for what objects um, you need. And then also here you'll be able to add tile attack detection which you can't do in the editor itself. So this runtime action provides some pretty cool things. And we'll go over all these settings. I'll also show you where you can find all of these in your objects as well. So with that said, let's get started. And as always, before we actually get into it, let me just show you the setup real quick. I have a typical player object, a weight, a walk, and then a slash. Um, I will be adding this runtime in this slash object. I can get away with doing it here because if we go to the animation setting, we'll see in the slash that the hit detection is actually, it doesn't turn on until you're about 10 frames in. So we have time to run the runtime and apply different attack settings before it even runs the attack detection. All right. And so that's why I'm doing it in that state. If the attack detection starts before your attack, or if it's, excuse me, if it starts as soon as you enter the state, then you might want a state before it that sets some attack settings and then goes into your state. All right, and then real quick, let's look at the uh, dog enemy. Uh, it's just got a normal motion, and then it's got a destroy state. And the check to be destroyed is we're going to be checking if his HP is equal to zero. And the basic settings, I gave him two life and two max life. So he should be good, two hits, and he will die. Okay, so let's get started and add this runtime action. So I'm going to add the runtime action here. And this first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the attack rate percentage. Now when it says attack rate, it's actually meaning the attack damage percentage. Okay, so this is, if we left it like this, it would be at 100% um, of the attack damage. And I'm just going to click OK for now. We're going to go into the basic settings, and we're going to see over here on this uh, blue lined box, we have received damage rate. And so we'll, we'll see that it's already set to 100%. So really even just clicking this by default isn't gonna do much. It's gonna keep everything as is. Um, let's go over this option real quick. So you can increase your percentage. This is a percentage number. And then you can increase a variation uh, of this percentage number right here. Um, there's a couple other things I, I'd like to point out while we're here is this red box here is your minimum and your maximum attack damage. And it will fluctuate when you attack. So it will pick a random number and it will give that number when an attack detection is hit. So right now I have this at one and one. That's why I said that it would take two hits to uh, get those dogs destroyed. Now, there is another thing to consider and I believe that by default, this set critical attack is on. And so we'll see that the critical attack boosts it by 150%. And it will round up. So if it's a if it's a, a half number, it will round up. And then the critical rate is 5%. Now this kind of threw me for a loop when I first started because sometimes I, I'd have that check HP equals zero. And sometimes I would hit once and the dogs would go away. So I was like, well, something is wrong with the attack detection. And no, it wasn't. It's that every once in a while I was hitting a critical hit. And so it's on by default. So if you don't want that kind of uh, calculations, then make sure that that is uh, clicked off. Okay. So with this said, we'll, we'll focus on this receive damage rate. So at 100%, with uh, one and one attack damage, this is what happens with our player. And again, the runtime action is on. So one hit, two hit, dead. One hit, two hit, dead. All right. And now let's go back into the attack setting. And now let's change it to 200%. So now it will actually give uh, two damage. And I'll hit OK. And then also I have a, a filter effect. And since we're going to be super strong, I'm just gonna unskip that now. And we should turn red and then hit. All right, so here is a, a powerfuler attack and bam. So it received our 
it changed our receive damage and killed them in one hit. All right, so moving along, we'll go to the next setting and we will click on this. It's called object group settings for attack detection. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that we can change the object's attack detection on the fly or what groups does these attack detections affect. Right now our only choices because our only groups are player and enemy. So what I could do is I could just leave this blank and say that, oh, now we can't hit anything. And I can click OK. And just by having this selected means it's going to change this. So if I was to hit OK, uh, first I want to show you what it's changing. Um, if you right click on your object settings, you'll see allow attack detection hits for object groups. And right now it's set for enemy group. Well, now we're overriding this with this runtime action. So that's what I meant by that. We could also change it to affect only the player group. All right, and then the more groups you get, the more lists there will be. And let's just try this out. Let's get this on the record for having seen it. And now when we try to attack the enemies, they will not register our attack detection because we have taken it away. All right, so moving along, let's click off this option now that we know what it does, and let's click on this one. This one's called Tile Group Settings for Attack Detection. Now, I know what you're thinking. Tiles can sense attack detection? Where is that setting at? And that's what I thought for months now, because I couldn't find a way. But this is how you do it. This is the only place I have found where you can actually set up your attack detection to affect tile groups. All right, and you can do so by just clicking add and clicking on what tile group to make or to uh, detect. Um, before I add this though, I wanna show you exactly what I'm talking about here. So I'm gonna just click okay and I'm gonna play test. And this is a tile, this uh, mushroom right here, this is a tile. And so right now I'm trying to hit it and it does nothing, okay? And if I go into the tiles settings and I go into the, it's a gimmick tile by the way. If I go and click on the mushroom, you'll see that there is no real settings for it until you click on the gimmick settings. And then you'll see an option that says when tile touches attack detection, okay? And I have it set to when it does touch attack detection, then you can change the tile into this uh, wispy thing right right uh on right here okay so i haven't so i've i have always known that this setting was there but i never knew how to activate it and that is until uh playing around with this attack setting i was able to realize that okay here is where you set the tile groups that you want to attack so let's just set it to the default tile group because that's what it is and now we'll hit OK. And now when I attack this mushroom, it turns into that wisp kind of animation thing. So that is how you can set up these groups. Now, one thing I want to point out, okay, because it, se it seems like this setting would be set ahead of time. So like it would be on, on a setup or an initialized state. And maybe not, but just in case that is how you are setting these up, it is important to note that these attack settings do not remain on scene transfers. So you would have to reset them up every scene transfer if that's how you're using these attack settings. Now, if you're using them in, in how in this example, where it's done in the same motion that is attacking, it's not a big deal because every time it's setting up these attack settings. And maybe that is the safer way to do it if you can um, manage that in your project. Now, while we're here talking about groups, um, let me just show you real quick how you would add a group if you needed it. You'd click on settings and go to group management. You could add a group here. And then you can also, this is for object groups, and then this is for tile groups. You can see the default tile. So we'll say uh, added tile group. And then we can hit okay. And those objects or those settings will now be selectable in your um, areas that you can set up detections. Now to 
set up a tile with a different group, we can click on, let's just say this mushroom right here. And in the basic settings, there is the tile group and you can select what tile group it belongs to. So if we said the added tile group and in our attack setting, we only have the default ones. I'm gonna click this off again. Um, we only have the default ones. It should not work. Yep. So then we would have to change this to be both or just one or the other. And then that's how that would work. So just in case you didn't know about um, tile groups or, or groups in general, there's a brief overview. All right, so those are the big settings right here that we've just covered. Um, now let's go down to the set attribute. And by attribute, it's talking about the attack attribute variable that every object has, okay? So before we go into uh, setting these, because you don't just set them with this attack settings, you can also directly set them with a variable. And so I wanna show you where attack attribute is and how it can be used as far as checks go, and then we'll come back and change it through the attack settings. All right, so first off, we'll start in the variable management tab, and you'll see that there is an attack attribute variable, and it's a default one that comes with every object. Um, the default value is zero, and if we go to notes, we'll see that we have some uh, words or definitions associated with the number. So zero is unassigned, one is fire, two is water, so on and so on until you get to nine and on, which is user defined. So they've given us some pre-made ones basically, and then we do have unlimited potential for it, right? And you can't click in these notes to say what your user ones are. So if you are wanting notes, you can actually, for instance, add a variable here. You can put it under attack attribute right here and call it your attack attribute notes. And then you could say nine equals, um, I don't know, uh, lava, uh, 10 equals hurricane. <laughs> yeah, my imagination's not that great in this, but this is how a uh, one way that you can keep it organized. Okay, so let's see how this attack attributes actually handled. Like what would check it, you know, how, how would you use it? And how you use it is through a condition check. So for instance, if we were to get rid of HP as zero and we want these enemies to only be destroyed if a certain attribute is associated with it. So if it was a fire attack, okay? Then we can click on add other condition settings and we could say hidden attack detection, set all of its uh, edges of the attack detection box. The attacking object would be the player. And then we could say if its set attribute is equal to fire, okay? And we can choose, these are the pre-made ones. Um, if you set your own, say we wanted that lava one, then we could set it equal to nine. And you can also say not equal to nine. So if it's not ice and it's fire, you know, you'd run multiple checks. Um, and then this would be checking for the lava. But let's just go simple and use the, the pre-made ones. And so we'll say fire. Okay. And if I was to hit OK now, it will not destroy unless the attack attribute is fire. All right. And if we go back to our player, I just want to make sure that I did not set it. Yep, don't set. And now we'll play test. And we'll see that it's getting hit because that's how it responds to attack detection, but it's not being destroyed. Okay. Now, if we were to say that, oh, by the way, this attack is also a fire attribute. We click OK. And we play test. It will now destroy right away. So that attack is now considered a fire attack. And then as you can guess, these ones will all do that um, for their specific, and these ones also have the number by it, which is nice. 
And then you can also assign your number. So if you were 9 or 10, then that would be the lava or hurricane one. Now, one more thing to point out about attack attribute is that you can also change this through a change switch variable runtime. You can click change variable. You could say the object self, let's say, because it's the player. You can then go to attack attribute, and then you can set it equal to whatever number you desire. Lava in this case. All right, and then when you hit OK, that would also change the attack attribute. Just in this attack setting, you can do it all at once, so it kind of makes it nice. Now, there's one more thing to go over here, and it is the changeable even after placement on scene. And this really isn't going to do much, but I just want to show just like every runtime that it's available. And so when you go into the scenes tab and you click on your object, you can now change these settings on the scene for this individual object. So we could say that we want to not be able to attack any tiles anymore. And we do not want to set any attributes when we attack. So now when we play test, this object will now not be able to uh, destroy that mushroom and will also not be able to destroy the dogs because we do not have fire associated with this. And that is a wrap for this uh, runtime action. So I hope you learned something. Um, if you have any cool ways that you've used this, uh, drop them in the comments below. I feel like this one would be one where it could have some really cool uses. And yeah, I will see you at the next video.